Last spring on our program, we featured a perennial here in our shade perennial garden that I think a lot of people are really starting to enjoy. This is the variegated Siberian bug gloss, and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite shade perennials. You get these beautiful little pale blue flowers and this handsome white and green variegated foliage. Well, we need to do a little bit of work on this plant to make sure it stays looking this good. Most variegated plants are some sort of mutation, and we occasionally will have a sprig that will revert back to the all green form. And see, it doesn't contain that white color. So it does, doesn't look as good as, as the original plant. Now, if we were to just leave this, this would grow more vigorous and stronger and outcompete the rest of the plant. That's because it's got more chlorophyll. It doesn't have any absence of chlorophyll in those variegated sections. So what we need to do is to come in at the base of the plant and keep those plucked away. Otherwise, it would uh, take over and we'd lose all the variegation. So with all of your variegated plants, keep an eye on them. And any of those reversions that go back to all green, keep those pruned away. Well, back here in this part of our garden, we've put up this little rustic fence here. This was done by some of our student gardeners, Autumn and Katie. And we put this in place here because we had some, some, some students and some visitors to the garden that were taking a shortcut uh, through one of our beds here and compacting the soil. But this was a, 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 a good measure that uh, you could do in your home if you have people cutting through a portion of your, your garden. Just put something in like this that's uh, decorative and just a gentle reminder for them to go around a different direction. We'll probably string some, some wire on this and grow some vines. Well, here above me is what I think one of the most welcome sights of spring, the flowering of our redbud trees. I think our state officials back in 1937 made an excellent choice when they labeled this as the state tree of Oklahoma, the eastern redbud. Now, I guess you could really argue as to whether the flowers or the buds are truly red. They're more of a, a purplish, uh, pinkish color but uh, the name redbud seems to kind of flow off the tongue a little better. The redbuds have a unique characteristic in that they exhibit this characteristic called coliflorus. It's where the flowers or the buds appear on the older branches or even the trunks of the trees. Now, this is very unique because it usually occurs in trees that are native to tropical rainforests but uh, we have a representation of this phenomenon here on one of our native trees, our eastern redbuds. This particular redbud is a cultivar called Oklahoma. Now, that may be a little bit confusing because if someone was talking about an Oklahoma redbud, you may think they were talking about one of our native redbud trees here in Oklahoma. But this one is, again, the cultivar Oklahoma, and if you remember, a cultivar is a named cultivated variety. This one is also a selection of a redbud that's a little bit different than our eastern redbuds. This is Circus canadensis variety texensis, and they are native to areas with a little bit tougher climatic conditions. They occur in northeastern Mexico, portions of the state of New Mexico, and also in the state of Texas, and down in the Arbuckle Mountains of Oklahoma, which is where this plant was originally collected back in 1964 by nurseryman Preston Warren of Spencer, Oklahoma. Preston told me uh, not long ago that the original plant where he collected, collected the wood for this plant is no longer there. It was removed when Interstate 35 was built through the Arbuckle Mountains. But the Oklahoma Redbud is one that is a little bit tougher than our typical eastern redbuds because uh, the leaves are a little bit smaller, they're thicker, and they have sort of a shiny surface to them. And right here in my hand is a flowering branch of one of our typical eastern redbuds. And you can see that the flowers of the Oklahoma redbud are a little bit darker and they're in a little bit thicker clusters on the plant. So a very, very nice 
cultivar for our gardens. We saw an Oklahoma redbud in the garden of Bonnie Borth out in Boyce City, out in the Panhandle last summer, so that is a testament to the toughness of this plant. But uh, you could select our state tree, the eastern redbud for your garden, or this selection of the Arbuckle redbud, Oklahoma. Well, if you think the name redbud doesn't really apply to our native redbud trees because of the pinkish purplish color, it's really off the mark when it comes to these white forms of our redbuds. We sometimes see the white redbud in the trade and out in, out in nature as well, but uh, did want to uh, show you that they do occur in this white color as well. Well, one thing that I try to do when I'm trying to get young redbud trees established in the landscape is to remove the seed pods. You can see there are several seed pods on this little tree that have remained on here through the year. These were formed from last year's flowers. But uh, whenever they appear, even when they're small and still green, you can just come out and just remove all of those seed pods from these young trees and that will convert the energy that would normally be going to produce the seed into helping the tree get itself established in the landscape.